Hello, it's Duncan. Just a quick one this week as we look at how we can bring back to context parameters some of the convenience of context receivers. We all have better things to do in the summer. A couple of episodes ago, we refactored this DB items class here to use the new context parameters. That's here where we have to name the parameter TX instead of the old context receivers. Let's have a look at that diff. Here it is. And you can see that with the receivers on the left, we didn't give this dbtx context a name, but it just became a receiver in this block. So we could use the DSL context, this property here from it, as a receiver with that Kotlin magic. In contrast with parameters, we have to give it a name here, and we have to use that name here to fetch the DSL context from it. Now that's more explicit, but it's also more wordy. What can we do about it? Well, we could use a with in this save to make this TX here into a receiver. So I could select all this and then say surround with. And irritatingly, with isn't one of those, but we could say surround with run and then just say with TX. So the with will bring this context parameter into scope as a receiver, and that means we could get rid of that there. And things would still compile. That has the dubious benefit of making this into a single expression function. So we could say with a transaction, it's this thing. And that in fact would mean we could lift this return. Although we'll have to do it by hand, it seems. But that's still good. It's still a bit more wordy than the context receivers though. So the official advice is that if we want to do this, that is to say revert this to here, but not have to use this TX in here. And I suppose by extension, just use an underscore there. Then we can do that by adding a context property. What would that look like? Well, we would say, I have a context that I'm going to call TX, and I do have to name it here. And given that context, I'm going to have a property, a val called DSL context, to match the name that I wanted here. And in order to get that, I am just going to the transaction and asking for its DSL context. So this now compiles and it works because contexts are passed on from one context function to another context function, or in this case, property, even if they're unnamed. So we have to name it in here because we actually want to do something with it. But in this function, we don't have to name it because the compiler will automatically pass it to this property here. There we go. Now this convenience function here is known as a bridge function. We can move to the top level. And these things we can either have the little local function or as provided as part of the API that brings along a, a dbtx context, whatever that is. We can still navigate to find it that way. And I suppose probably I should take it out of there and move it up to be with the dbtx context, even though that's in the same file. If I'm worried about polluting the global namespace with this DSL context thing just lying around, I suppose I could add a companion object to my dbtx context. I could pull this thing up into there. That would hide it away. You can see that this is now not seen anymore, but we can import it like that. Or we could explicitly say dbtx context, dsl context, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So I think we'll go back to and we should be able to make that same change in the load as well. So this is save. Let's go down and find load. There it is. It currently names this transaction here in order to say TX DSL context. But if we just make that an underscore, then we can get rid of that. Compared to the old context receivers, we have to write this boilerplate here in order to conveniently access the properties or functions in our context. But context functions like this one won't be polluted with all of the properties of all of the contexts that they require. And you'll see in fact that this here is explicitly then imported there. The one remaining downside is this ugly underscore here. But I suppose that's necessary at the moment so that the compiler knows whether this is context receivers or context parameters code. Once nothing supports context receivers, then we don't really need this underscore. And I have reason to believe that it might go away. I don't yet have enough experience with context parameters to know whether in practice I can be bothered to write these bridge functions and properties. They may also be a little bit of a performance hit, although it turns out that you can make them 
in line. Although in the JVM in particular, you might expect Hotspot to do that for us. So we'll remove it. Well, that's it for this week. Short and sweet, as we all have better things to do in the summer, with apologies if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Now we've completed our upgrade to Kotlin 2.2, I think it may be time to get down to some new features. I think I may set Claude, Code and Juni against each other to see who can implement editing an item. If you'd like to see that, then please subscribe to the channel, like this video so YouTube keeps on showing them to you, and maybe even buy a copy of the book they wrote with Nat Price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.